So today we're looking at a false prophet named uh, Kim Clement. He was born on September 30th, 1959 in South Africa. And uh, he passed away in uh, the United States in uh, 2016. He had a career as a singer and songwriter, a music director, and <clears throat> a pastor. In his early teen years, he and his uh, uh, brother formed a band called Mark IV, and uh, he also joined another band called Cosmic Blues, which toured uh, various places. He began smoking marijuana in his early teen years and became addicted to heroin, which is a, a dangerous, uh, highly dangerous drug, as I can imagine you know. <clears throat> and Kim had a life-changing event in uh, 1974. Uh, he was drunk and overdosed on heroin and was robbed and stabbed. He felt like he was going to die, but a Christian man saved him and uh, shared the gospel of Christ with him. And he became a follower of Christ and dedicated his life to sharing the message of Christ. Up until 1976, uh, Kim attended and, and served in the full gospel churches. He was uh, drafted into the South African army to fight with Cuba in Angola. <clears throat> After uh, 12 months of service, he went into the full-time ministry as a music director and a youth pastor for a Pentecostal Protestant church. About a year later, he moved to Durham and joined the Full Gospel Church as an assistant pastor. Uh, Kim uh, met Jane Elizabeth Barnes while he was serving at the Word of Faith Church, and they were married in 1978 in Durban, South Africa and they eventually had uh, five children. Kim was uh, working in the music uh, store when he met Pastor Jimmy Crompton, who offered uh, Kim a job in his church. His church was called Word of Faith and is located in Port Elizabeth. And Kim became the worship and uh, youth leader at the church, and he became uh, involved in street evangelism. And then uh, Prophet Bill Hammond, uh, confirmed uh, uh, Kim Clement's call to a prophet in, uh, of God in 1983. And uh, uh, we should note that here that uh, Bill Hammond believed in the latter rain movement from the time it began until the late 40s. And uh, I have an article, uh, or rather I have a video on the latter rain. Uh, so you might want to look at that. The uh, Pentecostal Church regret, uh, rejected this later rain movement at first. Uh, and then uh, uh, Bill uh, Hammond uh, uh, promises the man, uh, child, son of God doctrine, or promotes rather. Uh, the uh, man, child, son of God doctrine, and says he is both an apostle and a prophet. And he is now affiliated with the International Coalition of Apostles, which is known as the Round Table of Apostles. It was in uh, 1977 that Bill Heyman said that God spoke to him and told him that, I want to start raising up a company of prophets. And so Heyman uh, wants to raise up an army of prophets. Heyman uh, now believes that the prophets don't need to be 100% accurate either. And thus Kim Clement has this same view of accuracy and now claiming to be a prophet, he also admits that he has been wrong several times. Clement said that uh, his pastor, Fred Roberts, released him so that he could obey the call of being a prophet. <clears throat> so then in uh, 1991, Kim moved to the United States with his family. He established a uh, prophetic image expression ministry and traveled throughout the United States to churches and he made TV appearances. In uh, 1955, he founded a Detroit-based outreach uplift for the poor and wounded people of the city, and it was called the Warriors of the New Millennium. And, in, and this uh, uh, continued and spread all over the United States. Today, many of those uh, Pentecostal and Charismatic groups accept uh, uh, Kim as a prophet, even though many still oppose his uh, antics. This is because of his background in music and the fact that he prophesies while he sings. He is known as the singing prophet. Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, King, Kim has been wrong several times in his prophecy. 
Uh, Kim says that a prophet does not have to be accurate all the time. Uh, Kim, now those in the Pentecostal charismatic groups, uh, never describe uh, a prophecy that was wrong as a false prophecy. They just say they made a mistake. mistake. However, the uh, Bible says otherwise. Let's look at what Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 22 says. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is, the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. So if the prophecy does not come to pass, then we are to ignore that prophet and no longer pay attention to it. Yet Clement and others just say they did not falsely prophesy, but just made a mistake. So if a prophet makes a false prophecy, and, uh, and some still say that he is a true prophet, by the way, then how are we to identify a false prophet? How do we know if any of their future prophecies are true or mistakes? And based on uh, Deuteronomy 18, chapter, uh, uh, I mean, verse 22, we can put that prophet aside and not listen to him anymore. He is a false prophet. The Bible makes it clear that God gives a true prophet correct prophecies 100% of the time. So when they uh, first uh, get a false prophecy, they no longer speak for God and probably uh, never did. So let's look at uh, <clears> 2 <throat> Timothy 2.15, which states, Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And this verse tells us that if we do not study, then we are not approved of God. We are a workman that needs to be ashamed. And we cannot rightly divide the word. And if one is called out of God, uh, they would already know the information needed or God would uh, teach them. So if they go to a school to learn, then it should be a school that teaches the truth and not falsehood. Kim was rejected at least uh, two different Bible colleges and finally received most of his early biblical education at Oral Roberts University of all places. And then uh, this university uh, teaches false information, but lots of it agrees with the uh, Pentecostal charismatic beliefs. And since uh, Kim's former churches were the Pentecostal charismatic origin, uh, he would not know Oral Roberts University was one that taught false information. Oral Roberts also claimed to be a prophet and held some really absurd teachings. And then... As we mentioned previously, Bill Heyman called him, uh, Kim to be a prophet as his beliefs are uh, 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 the false teachings of the latter rank. So now let's look, uh, take a look at Kim Clement's teachings on sin, grace, and salvation. Uh, Kim states, I thought that Christianity was based on a relationship resulting from grace. My idea that each person is born with a treasure in their spirit is mocked. And I am accused of being a New Age prophet because I will not focus on their sin, but rather on their treasure. And he continues on to say, I know how a sinner feels because I have been one. And then Kim says, I do not believe that you must be born again to obtain salvation. He then states, uh, you cannot and will not make a disciple out of a sinner who has been introduced to Jesus Christ on the basis of their sinful inheritance only. So he's, he's really out of line there. Uh, if you, if you've got to be born again in order to be saved. Uh, so if that's what he's teaching, you wonder if anyone has been born again from his ministry. It is clear that Kim Clement is not teaching according to God's word. Uh, he said he did not believe that one must be born again to obtain salvation. Yet Jesus said in John uh, chapter 3, verse 3, uh, he said, uh, Jesus uh, answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And uh, so since uh, God's word is true and Ken Clements is false, no one can get to heaven and, uh, and that follows the teaching of Kim Clement. So Kim also made the, the following statement. He says, I am accused of being a new age prophet because I, I will not focus on their sin, but rather on their treasure. 
It should be noted here that uh, the false teacher seldom mentions a person's sin, and that is so they don't run off the congregation and get all their money from them. Uh, Kim Clement says, a person's uh, treasure uh, that we all possess uh, with is much more important to realize than a person's sinful nature. One has to know they're a sinner before they can be saved, by the way. So Christ actually died to present us before God as being without sin and blameless in his Son. And we are saved because of what Christ done and not because of some treasure we have within us that is waiting to be activated. Let's look at what Jesus says in Luke uh, to see what uh, Jesus thinks of and uh, this is Jesus speaking, by the way. Luke uh, chapter 6, verses uh, 43 through 45. It says, For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doeth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. Uh, for of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man... Out of the treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. So in God's word we, we find that a true prophet focused on sin so people would repent, and Kim Clement does not do that. False prophets will avoid speaking on sin uh, so they can be accepted by uh, all of the people they're uh, speaking to. So when Ken Clement said he would not focus on their sin, but rather on their treasure, he is speaking of, of his own beliefs and not what is taught in God's word. Uh, if we don't focus on their sins, then there's no way for them to be saved since they are focused on their treasure as taught by Ken Clement. Then it claims uh, he doesn't focus on sin, but looking at God's word, we find that sin is what separates us from God. If we don't clear up our sin problem, our treasure is pointless, and we can clear up our sin problem by accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior. In an interview on TVN, uh, Kim Clement stated, Everyone that's born, God has placed something special inside. It's our responsibility as preachers of the New Millennium, uh, he's talking about the New Millennium Church that, that he formed, to bring out the treasure that's already there. And I'm telling you, there's going to be some uh, ignoramuses coming to the meetings, into our meetings, the New Millennium Church, that's not focusing on the sin and trying to force them to repent and make them afraid because they're going to go to hell. And they're going to discover there's a glory. There's a beauty inside of me that only Christ can bring out with the power of his breath and his resurrection. So this uh, uh, is once again the false teaching that Clement learned from the New Age group. Clement is not only a false prophet, but also a false teacher. And uh, is Kim Clement lost or, or a false teacher? He has stated, I know how a sinner feels because I have been one. And notice that he has been one, indicating that he is no longer a sinner. Uh, what does God say about sinning? God's word tells us in John uh, chapter 1, verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So it's the truth in Kim Clement. And next we find in uh, uh, 1 John, uh, the next verse, chapter 1, verse 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So it is clear that one can be saved and still sin, or, or God wouldn't have that in the, in the text here. And then finally, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 10, we are told, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him, that is God, a liar, and his word is not in us. So if uh, Ken Clement is saying that he is not now a sinner, then he is lost and cannot understand God's word. So there are uh, many other Bible doctrines that Kim Clement doesn't understand and teaches him wrong. Uh, the following is one of the false prophecies. 
On uh, January 12, 2004, Kim Clement made a prophecy about Osama bin Laden being captured in 35 days after his prophecy. He stated, talk about stepping out in Utica, New York. For those of you who don't know anything about my ministry, the Lord has given me very, very clear words about political things that come to pass, very clear. And we've uh, had the Secret Service uh, visit us a number of times and investigate because of these prophecies. They are more interested and they have uh, interpretations for this that I and the church uh, didn't even think about. And uh, and he goes on, he says, Osama, Osama bin Laden said that in 35 days, America, he was prophesying, predicting that this country would be abolished, basically wiped out, because he has a plan for 35 days. And the word of the Lord came to me. The Spirit of the Lord said to me, you prophesy that the very thing that he said and predicted for this nation, tell him, prophesy, that that is reversed, and I'm going to bring him, Osama bin Laden, out in 35 days. And so this uh, this prophecy was proven false on uh, uh, February 16th, when Osama bin Laden had not been captured 35 days after that, after uh, uh, Kim prophesied that he would in uh, January 12th, 2004. Uh, Osama bin Laden was not captured until the, uh, May 1st, 2001, which is about seven years later. Um, so let's look at one more of Kim's false teaching. Uh, he stated that the, the church, with its prophetic mantle, can actually win a lot more people to the Lord because of the idea that we are uh, presenting right now, and that is that every one of you were born and formed and sent upon by God for something great. The prophetic makes you aware of something that is already a present in you and that you've not seen. So everyone that's born, God has placed something special inside. It's our responsibility as preachers of the new millennium, uh, again, that's his church, to uh, bring out the treasure that's already there. I'm telling you, there's going to be some ignoramuses uh, coming to the me uh, meetings, into our meetings, the new millennium church, uh, that's about focusing on the sin and trying to force them to repent and make them afraid because they're going to go to hell. And they're going to discover there's a glory, there's a beauty inside of me that only Christ can bring out with the power of his breath and his resurrection. And that's what way the church is going. So Kim is referring to a treasure that he believes is inside uh, our hearts and something special inside of us. But the Bible says in Romans chapter 9, verses 21 through 23, says, had not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with uh, long suffering the vessels of wrath uh, fitted for destruction, uh, and that he might uh, make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afforded prepared unto glory? So in 19, uh, and let's, let's continue on now, uh, in, in 1995, Clem uh, prophesied, I pray for Detroit City, that God, you would send forth your flame to the four corners of the earth. I prophesy on behalf of the Lord God of Jehovah. From this city, I will prophesy to the nation. I will send forth my flame to the north, the south, to the mountains, to the west, and the flame shall come from this city. Of course, this is a false prophecy since it didn't happen. So Kim believes many of the false uh, New Age teachings, and they always refer to flames and fire for cleansing upon cities and other areas. God's word never mentions anything like this for the flame except for judgment. There's uh, one, one exception is uh, mentioned, which is in Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. And uh, again, uh, Clement prophesied on July 25th, 1996. He says, there has been a terrorist act and there will be another for the Spirit of the Lord says, America will retaliate. But God says, even as 
they retaliate with natural weapons of war and they say we will go to the place of the east and we will go and we will bring down for for what they did to our people as they flew in the air over long island so it is said that he predicted the 9 11 uh, from this statement however he did not mention the twin towers nor the 3,000 people were killed uh, he only says that they did to our people as they flew over uh, the air over Long Island. So the planes didn't even go over Long Island. There were four planes, not just one. And so this is another uh, uh, false prophecy of Ken Clement. And uh, he, he was once asked, uh, uh, Kim was, are you ever wrong? And, and Kim responded, yes, I am. So if you're uh, out there to trick me or trip me up, you're wasting your time because I go to God three times a day and I pray. And if I've uh, done something that may have uh, misrepresented him, I ask him to forgive me. If you don't fully understand that the prophecies, it's best that you don't get up and try to pull me to pieces, making out that I'm a false prophet. So uh, uh, listen closely to the following uh, verses, uh, and, and we're uh, um, about to come to a close here. Matthew 24, verses 23 and 24 tells us that, that if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here Christ is, or there, believe it or not. Believe it not. And uh, verse 24, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And then Jude, verses 17 and 18, uh, says, But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. And then uh, Second Peter Chapter 3, verse 3 says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Jude uh, 11 says, Woe unto them, for they have gone the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for a reward. Second Corinthians uh, 11, 4 through 5 says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to the works. We have seen the false teachings of Kim Clement and a few of his uh, false prophecies, and these indicate uh, that he may not even be saved, let alone be a prophet of God. He is masquerading as a minister of righteousness. He follows the teachings of uh, uh, many other false groups, such as Prosperity Gospel, Word of Faith, Pentecostals, Charismatics, New Agers, and so on. Don't be taken by Kim Clement, but flee from his teachings and seek the truth from God's Word. Now, uh, I thank you for listening, and uh, may God bless.